In this video, we'll utilize and create custom loading screens to be used within Babylon.js and Vue. Loading screens are a great visual indicator to let end users know that a scene is loading in the background. We'll start off with the built-in loading screen available to us in Babylon.js. Now we're going to create two versions of the loading screen using basic HTML and CSS within Vue. So let's get started. Okay, let's take a look at our starting scene. So we have a skybox and we also have this scene that was created inside of Blender. Now we're going to be using this as an example of something that we want to have loading in the background. If I were to refresh this, you'll notice that it takes a few seconds for us to actually see that mesh object. Now I'm on a desktop with a fairly fast connection. So this only takes me a few seconds, but if you're on a laptop or a mobile device, you may not see this for a while. I want to have some sort of feedback on the screen, letting me know that this is loading. So we're going to be implementing some loading screens. We're going to start off with the basic loading screen that we have available to us with Babylon JS. Then we'll take a look at creating a custom loading screen afterwards. So let's jump into our code and let's take a look at how we can use the basic loading screen first. Okay, so I created a class called custom loading, and this comes from the snippet called loading scene demo.ts. All this includes is a basic scene. So we have a camera, we have some lighting, and we have some environment textures in here. And I'm also importing a mesh called lighting scene.gov. That's all we have in here. Now to implement a basic loading screen, we need to do this through the engine. So to do this, we need to enable the display loading UI method. So we say this, dot engine dot display loading UI. Okay, we'll save this real quick and we'll jump back and take a look at this. Okay, so this is the basic loader that we get with Babylon JS. We have a black background, we have the logo in the middle, and then we have this animation rotating around over and over again. Now we've just displayed the loading UI, but we need to actually turn this off manually ourselves. Otherwise, this is all we're going to see. So let's take a look at how we can turn this off. So going back into the constructor, we did call this up here in the constructor, but you can actually call this wherever you want. So whenever you want to display the loading UI, you can call it this way. Now this turns on the display loading UI, but now we need to turn it off after we're done loading everything in our scene. So I'm going to do this after we create everything in our scene. So after we create the environment, that's when I then want to turn this off. So I'm going to say this dot engine dot hide loading UI. I'll save that real quick. Okay, so it's loading, 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 and then finally it fades away, and now we can interact with our scene. Okay, so pretty good for a basic loader. Now let's take a look at how we can customize that to our own liking. To customize that, we need to use something called an interface. So going back into our custom loading class, I need to create a separate class for controlling all the logic around a custom loading screen. So in our Babylon examples, let's create a new file. We'll call it custom loading screen.ts. Okay, so export class custom loading screen. And when we want to use an interface with this, we need to implement an interface. So we say implements. With interfaces, these typically start off with a capital I. So if I type out a capital I, you can see all the different interfaces that are available to us. And the one that we're looking for is called I loading screen. Now, if you click on that, you should see it imported at the very top. So I loading screen from Babylon JS core. Let's add in our curly braces. If you're not familiar with how interfaces work, think of them as a template. Interfaces are going to include things like methods and properties. These methods have signatures. So a method signature is the entire method without any kind of logic. This includes the name, the parameters, and the return type. With the properties, we just have a type. So if we hover over the custom loading screen, it's going to complain because we have not correctly implemented this interface. We're looking for things like the display loading UI and high loading UI. We've already gone over how to use those methods with the engine so far, but we also need to include the UI background color and the UI text. Now, both of these are properties, so let's add those in. That is a string type. And note, for these properties, we don't actually need to do anything with them. We just need to include them in our class. We can include all the methods and properties of an interface without actually even doing anything with them at all but we do need to implement them. Next, we need the loading UI text. That's also a string. Okay, again, it's still complaining because we have not included the display loading UI and hide loading UI. So let's add those in next.
Okay, now I properly implemented this interface. We haven't actually done anything with it. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have an empty class that implements an interface. We are gonna be modifying this class in a moment, but we need to take a look at a few things that we need first. Now, all we're gonna be doing in this class is we're gonna be modifying a couple of HTML elements. These elements are on the components on the view side. So we're gonna be adding in those elements. Then we'll take a look at how we can modify them through the custom loading class, and then finally through the custom loading screen class. So let's go back into the component itself. The component is called Babylon Examples. So let's open that up. Okay, now I did include this already just to save on time. So let me uncomment that out. And we're not doing anything quite yet with this, but if I save this, we can see what this looks like. Okay, so this is our basic loading screen. You can see it covers up everything, including the top title there. We see loading, this is just some basic text. And then we have a loading bar. Now, right now this is set to 100%. That's why it shows up green like this, but the background is actually white. And we'll take a look at how we can modify that dynamically. Down below that, we have some filler text. This will display the percentage of load. So once we're done loading, it'll say 100%. When we start off, it'll say zero. So let's take a look at how we can reference these different types of elements within our code, pass that along through the different classes that we just created, and then see how this all works once it's all done. Okay, now we are gonna be jumping around a little bit. What we want to do in our Babylon examples is we wanna grab the loading bar and the percent loaded. These are the only two elements that are gonna be dynamic. We're also gonna be swapping out things with the loader at the very top here as well. We want this to fade out similar to the other loading screen that we had with Babylon JS. And then we want to finally set the display to none for the loader. That way we can interact with our canvas down below. Now we are gonna be passing that in to the custom loading class in the constructor. And then we're gonna pass that information down to the custom loading screen up here. So there is gonna be a little bit of back and forth just to set this up. So let's go into the custom loading class and we'll take a look at that. All right, so in the constructor, I know I need to have a couple of new HTML elements. So going back into the Babylon examples, we need the loader at the very top here. We want this to fade out and we also want to adjust the display to none once we're done loading. I want to adjust the loading bar dynamically. We're gonna be adjusting the width of that by applying a style attribute with the width percentage. And then we also want to dynamically change the percent loaded here. We're gonna be swapping this out with our own custom text with the percent loaded, All right? So I need to reference one, two, three elements. So I'll do that in the constructor up here. Okay, so we have a private loading bar, HTML element. Okay, so there we go. Again, we have the loading bar, the percent loaded, and then the loader. I'm gonna pass these down to the new custom loading screen that we created up here. So we need to create a reference to that class in here. And then with the engine, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be swapping out the loading screen that the engine typically has with our new custom loading screen instead. So at the very top, let's create a variable called loading screen. It'll be of type custom loading screen. Okay, and make sure that that gets imported at the very top here. So import custom loading screen from wherever you have that saved. Let's go down into the constructor. And right after we create the engine before the display loading UI, we're gonna add in a couple of new things. So we're gonna say this dot loading screen. And I'll set that equal to a new instance of the custom loading screen. Okay, right now we don't have anything within the constructor of the custom loading screen, but I wanna pass in the loading bar, percent loaded and the loader into the custom loading screen. That way we can just focus on the logic for the loading screen within this class. We don't have to worry about doing anything inside of this class. So let's go ahead and go back into the custom loading screen. We'll add that into the constructor. All right, so let's add in a constructor. So again, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for these three elements here. So I can actually just copy these and we'll paste them in here. Okay, and I'm not actually gonna do anything in the constructor. I just wanna be able to have access to these different properties. So the loading bar, percent loaded, and the loader. Now in the display loading UI, whenever this gets called, I want to set the loading bar and the percent loaded to 0%. So let's go ahead and set that up. 
for the loading bar, we're going to be adjusting the width. So we're going to do this by saying this dot loading bar dot style dot width and width is a string. So I'll just set that to 0% to start off. We'll do the same thing for the percent loaded. But with the percent loaded, we're going to be using inner text. So this dot percent loaded dot inner text. Now set that equal to the same thing. Let's go down to the high loading UI and let's reference the loader. So this dot loader dot, and I want to add in a new ID. So let's take a look at the CSS for this component real quick. So going back into the Babylon examples, right now we have an ID called loader. Jump down to the very bottom, you should see the CSS for that. So this just takes the entire size of the main element, which is the parent. We have the position, all that kind of stuff set up. And the loaded ID is nearly identical, but the main difference here is that we have the opacity set to zero, and there is a transition for that opacity. So we're waiting one second, and then we're essentially fading out. We're setting the opacity down to zero. All this does is it makes it transparent. So we're swapping out IDs. We're going from the loader ID to the loaded ID. So nearly identical, except with the loaded, we have a transition for the opacity. So going back into our custom loading screen, I want to set that new ID when we're hiding this to loaded. Okay, we are going to come back to this class in a moment. Let's jump back into the custom loading class. Okay, so it's complaining right here in the custom loading screen instance because we have not included the elements that we need. So we need the loading bar, percent loaded, and loader. So let's add those in. This dot loading bar. This dot percent loaded. And finally, this dot loader. Okay, so far so good within our TS classes. Let's go back into the view component. Jump up to the very top. Now, since we have some new elements in our constructor of the custom loading class, we need to reference those here as well and assign them. So what do we need to get? Well, we need to get the loader. We need to get the loading bar. And we also need to get the percent loaded. We're going to do something very similar to how we grab the canvas. So I'll create a variable called loading bar. And this time we're going to say document dot get element by ID. So the ID that I'm looking for is called loading bar. And I'll say as HTML element. We'll do the same thing for the other two elements. So this will be percent loaded. Okay, so loading bar, percent loaded, and loader. Make sure that you have the correct name for the ID. So loading bar, percent loaded, and then loader. Okay, let's pass those into the constructor now. Make sure that you assign them to the correct order. So loading bar goes first. Okay, going back into the custom loading class. Looks like we have an error down here. I believe that will clear out in a moment. But one last thing that we need to do is we need to reference the engine's loading screen. So right now we're still using the default loading screen. I want to replace that with the one that we just created. So right above the this.engine.displayLoadingUI, we need to say this.engine.loadingScreen. And now we can use our new loading screen, this.loadingScreen. So now anytime we call the display loading UI or the high loading UI, it's going to be referencing our custom loading screen instead. I'm going to give this a quick save. Okay, so if you're still getting errors down below like we saw just before, you can go ahead and restart the server and it should clear out. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a quick test. Okay, so let's refresh this real quick. All right, so we don't see the loading bar or the percent changing. Now it did fade away, but if I click in here, I can't actually interact with anything in this scene. So we need to fix those few things. Again, I cannot click in here and I don't see the loading bar appearing or the percent changing. So we need to update that dynamically. What we can do is actually reference the percent loaded of the imported mesh. So we're going to be using a on progress callback for that. Let's go back into our code and let's take a look at how we can modify that. Okay. So once again, we are going to be jumping back and forth between the custom loading and the custom loading screen class. We'll start off in the custom loading first. Now in our create environment, in the import mesh async, if I hover over this, you'll see that we have the option to utilize a on progress callback. So with the on progress, we can reference an event, which will then give us access to the loading information. 
To access this, we first need to assign the scene and then we can assign the on progress callback. So this.scene. And then for the on progress, we're going to add in a arrow function. I'll just save this to format. And in here, we can provide a event. I'll call it EVT. And within here, if I start typing out EVT.loaded, this defines the loaded data length. Now loaded is essentially how much we have loaded the mesh. We also have total. So loaded over total will give us a percentage. Now I can't use loaded as is. I need to actually multiply this by 100 and then divide that by the total. That will then give us a number that we need. So what I'm going to do is actually create a variable called load status. And I'll set that equal to, let's add in a couple of parentheses here. I'll say EVT dot loaded times 100. Then I want to divide that by the EVT dot total. I also want to set this to a fixed value. So add in a couple more parentheses dot to fixed. So before we can actually use the load status, I want to be able to use this within the custom loading screen as a method. So going back into that class, let's add in a new method. So this new method is just going to take in the information from the custom loading class and then modify the loading bar style width and the inner text to match the loading percentage. So I'll create a method called update load status. This is going to take in a string, which I'll call status. And we'll set the return type to void. And we're going to do something similar to what we did up here. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it in here. And now we're going to be using a template literal to take the status here and combine it with a percent. So add in some back ticks. We'll say status with a curly brace and a dollar sign. And then we're going to add in a percent symbol after that. That is the width. I'll copy this and do the same thing for the percent loaded. Okay, so now we have a method that we can continually update over and over again with a status value. We need to then call this in our custom loading class. Okay, now remember that method is part of the custom loading screen class. It's not part of the engine. So we need to reference the loading screen, which is an instance of the custom loading screen. So I'm gonna say this dot loading screen dot, and we're looking for the update load status. That takes in a argument, which is the string, which is this guy right here. Load status. Take a look at this in our scene. Okay, so there we go. There is our loading bar and the percentage. The other issue we haven't fixed yet, which is I cannot interact with the scene. Let's take a look at how we can modify that next. Okay, so going back into our code, we're calling the hide loading UI of the engine, which is actually referencing the method on the custom loading screen class. Let's take a look at that real quick. Now in here, all we're doing is changing the ID. So that allows us to actually create the transition in our battle on examples here. We're sending the transition with the loaded ID here down to zero for the opacity over one second. After one second, I then want you to set the display to none. That will give me access to the scene so I can actually interact with it. Let's go back into our custom loading screen class. And in here, right after we create that fade out effect, I then want to wait one second and then set the display to none. We're going to use set timeout for this. And this takes in a arrow function. And then we provide a timeout. So this will be one second. So I'll type out 1000. So after one second, what do we want to do? Well, I want to reference the loader as well. This dot loader dot style dot display equals none. Okay, so after one second, once we're done loading, we're then going to fade out. That'll take one second. And then I want to set the display to none. So save that and give this another quick test. Okay, so I'll refresh this. Okay, it's loaded. Wait a second. And now I can interact with my scene.
Okay, great. So now everything is working with our custom loading screen. Now I want to go over one last method of creating a loading screen. This will be view specific. So this has nothing to do with Babylon JS. It might be a little bit simpler, but we're basically taking the logic that we just created and we're transferring that over to the view side instead. Let's jump back into the Babylon examples component. I'll take all of this right here for the loader. So just the divs right here and I'll comment them out. I now want to use a new component that has been created already. It's called loading screen view. Again, this will be available in the code repository. So let's take a look at this real quick. All this is, is a component that has a basic animation. So in this component at the very top, we have a main element and we're using a ternary operator. So this right here is a ternary operator. And this allows us to add or remove classes to this main element based off a condition. So here we're saying, I want to add in a, another class. If is loaded is set to true. So if this is set to true, we're checking, is that true? Then add this. Otherwise add this. So this is an inline if statement. If that's true. We're going to add this class. Otherwise we're not going to add anything at all. And then we add in a comma here because this is an array. It's an array of classes. So by default, it'll automatically have the loader class. So once this is set to true, we're then going to add in the loaded class, which is then going to create the transition of fading out. Down here, we have an animation container and then some text that just says loading. All this is, is a basic animation that kind of pulses in and out and fades in and out as well. Let's take a look at some of the logic that we have down below. So in view, we can reference props. So the prop is going to come from the parent object, which is the Babylon examples component. That's going to have the loading screen component as a child. We can then pass a prop down to the child, which is called is loaded. This is a Boolean. In view, we can use something called watchers. Now this will allow us to actually detect whether or not there is a change with that prop called is loaded. So if we detect any kind of change with that prop, we can then tell it to do something if there is a change. So once this is set to true, I can then say, Hey, let's wait one second. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before in the custom loading screen method up above, but this time we're going to do it a slightly different way. So we're going to grab the element by the class name called loader. Okay. Again, this guy right here. And because this is getting elements, this is a collection of elements. I want to grab the first element. Then I want to set an attribute, which is style. And I'll set the display to none. And again, we're going to wait one second. So a slightly different way of doing this, this is more view specific, but it works almost identical to how it worked before. Now that's all we're doing with the logic. If we take a look at the loaded class here, we're not using an ID. We're using a class for this. We have the exact same settings as before. So again, identical to the loader, but this time we have an opacity set to zero. And then we have a transition of one second. Now take a brief look at what we have for the P tags here. So we just have three P tags with a width of 15%. I'm using the Oswald font. And then we have some animations that are being used with this. So the curly braces are the child one and child three. The center point here is the CS. This has a different animation than the other two. So the curly braces have an animation called pulse. And all we're doing with that animation is we're adjusting the scale down to 0.8 and back up to one. So it's going to change in size over and over again. It's going to keep doing that over and over again with the opacity as well. With the pulse fade, all we're doing is adjusting the opacity going from one down to 0.5 and vice versa. Okay. So let's go ahead and implement this component. Let's go back to the Babylon examples. Okay. So to import this automatically, I'm going to start typing out loading screen. Okay. So there is the component. I can left click on it, add in a closing tag. Make sure that you do see the import in the script section. So import loading screen from wherever you save that. So dot loading screen dot view. Now remember this takes in a prop. So if you're not familiar with how props work, we provide the prop name. So is loaded right here is loaded is the name of the prop in the loading screen components. So we're looking for a prop called is loaded and we need to assign a value to it. 
Now, the way that we're going to do this is down below in the Babylon examples, we have a data section. Think of this as a state for the components. And we have a Boolean in here called loaded. Now with loaded, we're then going to be passing this on to the loading screen component. So let's add that in here. I'll type out loaded, but you can see right now it's thinking that this is a string and not the property down below here. So to reference that from data, we're going to add in a colon in front of is loaded. Okay. So now this knows that this is coming from this component. So we're looking for the loaded Boolean. Now, how do we actually modify loaded in this component? Well, we're going to be using a function in this component, and we're going to pass that along to the custom loading class. I'm no longer going to be using these components right here. I'll just comment them out for now. And we are going to get a warning right here because we no longer have references to these. I'm going to remove these for now. Okay. We need to modify the constructor of the custom loading. So let's do that real quick. So in the custom loading class, we're no longer using the custom loading screen here. And with that, we no longer need to use the loading bar percent loaded or the loader, but I don't want to remove these from the constructor. Instead, I'll make these optional. And to do that, I'm going to add in a question mark after all of these. I'll add in a new argument in here. This will be a function and that function is going to reference a function in our component over here. So that function, all it's going to be doing is changing the data property here loaded to true. So there is a method section down below here. And that method is called set loaded. And all it does is it changes this dot loaded to true. So I want to pass that along to the custom loading. Then in our custom loading class, we then call that function, which will then change it over here. So to provide a function as a parameter, I'll write out private and I'll say set loaded. And here I'm just going to add in a arrow function, which is set to a return type of void. By default, this loading screen will be enabled. So all we have to do is call set loaded, which will then turn it off. So I'm going to call that down below. Instead of saying this on engine dot high loading UI, I'll remove that and say this dot set loaded. Just like that. We actually don't even need any of this in here for the load status since we're not actually referencing data anymore, but I'll just leave this out for now. We'll leave that in there. That's fine. And let's go up to the very top. Let's see what else uh, we need. The, all of this right here can be commented out. Let's jump back into the component for the Babylon examples. Okay, we need to pass in the set loaded function. So this dot set loaded. Okay, go ahead and save that and we'll take a look at the loading screen now. Okay, so a very simple animation. And then when we're done loading, I can still interact with my scene afterwards. So similar to what we did before, just a slightly different approach in that we're using this on the view side. So a lot of the logic is passed on over to the view components. So there you have it. That's how you create a custom loading screen for your scenes in Babylon JS.